Sunday the 28th of November 2004, Liverpool Arsenal in this wonderful stadium, 90 minutes on the clock, it's one all, talk us through it, what happens from your perspective. Never forget the day, Ar arriving at Anfield here on the day, knowing I was starting, the first thing I did when I got here to Anfield was go to the medical room to have an injection, Be because physically I wasn't in in fit enough to play, but I had to have so an... So what was wrong with you? knees i had real bad knee troubles at the time we had uh, barros was out injured i think cc was out injured so it was sort of my opportunity to play i was not going to turn that down so i had an injection um a pain killing injection to try and numb the pain to try and help and you were up against one of the the great pairings uh, in premier league history Torre. Sol Campbell, how did you find playing against them? Well, I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be a challenge, but the confidence I had was I was here at Anfield. I had the home support behind me. And then I look around my team, I see Steven Gerrard in behind. I see Harry Kula on the left-hand side who can make things happen. Xabi Alonso and, and Hatman who were strong in midfield. Carragher and Hippier, so I'm thinking this is going to be a decent game. And it was a real tight game. We go 1-0 up late on in the first half with Alonso great finish and, and and it was funny because when Alonso scored I hadn't scored I was thinking the cameras are going to be on Alonso get to Alonso as quick as you can because tomorrow in the newspapers it's going to be the picture of him celebrating and I want to make sure I'm in them pictures tomorrow so I never thought sure. like that well, I wish I had a done <laughs> well I should be scoring but I wasn't so it was uh, get to Alonso and I was first there give him a big hug made up for uh, for Jabby and um, and I was there with all the pictures so I was thinking if that is the only goal I'm going to be in the pictures tomorrow for the papers. Arsenal equalise and then I think it's Chris Kirkland in, the, in goal for Liverpool and it's a long punt down the, down the field. I mean, what, what are you thinking at that stage? Are you thinking this is it? You, you know, it's, it's, it, you know it's, it's going to finish in a draw, it's game over, we've done OK. I mean, how did you think when you played? 1-1 one, one was a good result against the Arsenal side. I'm thinking... Why has the manager not brought me off? So maybe a little bit surprised at, at that. And I'll never forget it because her man won a free kick right at the Anfield Road end on the, uh, on the dead ball line. As you say, Chris Kirkland takes the free kick. Before he takes the free kick, I did something that I've never done before. i never done previously. I turned to Sol Campbell, who was marking me, centre-half, played for England, of course, one of the great Premier League players. And I said, Sol, can I have your shirt at the end of the game? Now, didn't particularly rate him as, as, a, as a player. What, what, what did he say? He was like, yeah. So I was like, great. Yeah, I'll have your shirt at the end of the game. Thinking, thinking that probably the referee's whistle is going to go when the, when, the goal, when the free kick's taken. I go up for a header with Vieira, who's about six foot five and I'm six foot, so he should be winning that header. We both missed the ball. So Campbell and Torre go for the same ball. They clean out Harry Kuehl. So the ball's there, sitting about. It was probably about 28, 30 yards, but... 15 years on, so it's about 35, 40 yards. <laughs> it's, it's a long way. Yeah, it was a long way out. And, and uh, what, what are you thinking then? As the ball's dropping, did you think? Was it instinctive? Well, we, we, you scored goals, it's instinctive. Not and from that, that far out. That, 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 well, it's probably the furthest out I've ever scored. Uh, I was shattered. But the instinct was, it's there to hit. And I've and hit it beautifully. Um, the keeper was lame and German international. Were you thinking just power or... Was there was a was it the accurate? Were you saying I'm going to aim for that far corner? Yeah, I'm going for the corner, but just hit it because it, it was there to hit, and, and um, it's gone in. And the roar, you know, the the emotion is something that I'll, I'll never forget. It was run to the cop, celebrate with the support. Where were your family sitting? They're in the main stand. Right. Um, what means just come to the, share the moment with the cop, the Liverpool supporters, and that's exactly what I did. All the team came, hugging everyone. It was. Um, it was that, that moment that I'd always dreamed of as a young player to, to experience scoring a winning goal against such a top team. Would you describe that as your, the greatest goal you've scored? The goal I can look back on and, and, and reflect and say it was a, an incredible moment for me. It, it was, like I say, I'd love to have scored that goal in a cup final. It felt like a cup final to me because Arsenal was such a good side. And to do it here at Anfield when... Liverpool fans have seen so many good games, so many great uh, memories, players here. It was nice to have my own moment, which, like I say, Liverpool supporters still remember. And in front of the cop. In front of the cop. In front of the cop. You know, if it was down at the Anfield Road, yes, it would have been special, but it's the cop. So, so that made a big difference as well. Right, Neil, we are in the iconic Liverpool dressing room, your old dressing room. Can you remember 
your debut, your first game? League Cup uh, for Liverpool. The manager was Gerard Houllier, playing Ipswich Town here at Anfield, special occasion. And I rem I'll never forget it, we're in, in the dressing room here before the game, playing against Ipswich, we're starting. And the manager, Houllier, says, who wants to take penalties? Now, I'm a young kid, I've done well scoring goals, but I've got senior players around me. And I've gone, yeah, I'll take the pen, no problem. No one else wanted to take it. I'm not sure anyone else heard it, but I heard the manager say it. So he looked at me in front of everyone and said, you're taking penalties today. So I'm absolutely made up. So I'm going out there, confidence a little bit higher than perhaps um, it would have been, knowing that I'm on penalties. First half goes, I'm awful. The manager should be bringing me off at half-time. We're losing 1-0. Second half starts within five minutes of the start of the second half. I'm running to the cop. Mark Venus is the defender for Ipswich. I'm waiting, waiting, knock it past him, bang, cleans me out. Penalty in front of the cop. One of our players has already got the ball in his hand. He's got it under his arm and he stood on the penalty spot. That player was El Hadj Juf. Now I'm picking myself up, saying, Jufi, give me the ball. So I turn to the captain, who was Stephen Gerrard. It may even be his second game as captain for Liverpool. And I said to Stevie, have a word with him. And he was like, Losing 1 0, let him take it. So he, he let um, Jufi take the penalty. He scored, I celebrated, but that could have been also different. On my debut, taking that penalty. A um, minute later, clean through, hit the post. Five minutes later, the manager brings me off. So it could have been a dream debut. We progressed through um, the, the cup competition that year, and I eventually scored in the semi final, but I didn't score on my debut. So I'm blaming El Hadji for that. Neil, you played alongside some great players uh, here at Anfield and also a, a couple of good managers, uh, Gerard Houllier, Rafa Benitez. How did they differ in style? Both differed in the fact that the dressing room under Gerard Houllier was predominantly French. That was the start of the invasion of continentals within the Premier League and certainly at Liverpool. So, like I say, there's a lot of French contingent within the dressing room. He was a French manager. The diet all of a sudden started to change. When I first arrived at Melwood, we had bottles of Coke, we had Sprite, we had Fanta in there. By the end of that season under Julio, that had all gone. It was, uh, it was all healthier drinks. How did that go down in the dressing room? It was like, where's the, where's the drinks? <laughs> it, to us, we didn't know any different. Yes, that was, a, that was a real learning experience for a lot of us. But the difference with Julio and Benitez, the biggest difference... Gerard Houllier spent one day on the training pitch and that day was Friday. He would not be on the training pitch any other day except Friday. So he, he would delegate? He, what he did was he, he, he helped design the new Melwood training facility at Liverpool and his office could oversee the whole training ground. So he'd stand in there, maybe because the weather was not great, but the only day he'd come out was Friday. Rafa Benitez, every day, was on the training pitch, in his shorts, rain, wind, whatever. And tactically, we learned so much more under Rafa Benitez than any manager certainly I've experienced because every day, the warm-up was, this is where you are when we have possession of the ball. You're a centre forward, I'm a centre forward, you stand there, right back, you stand there, centre back. Everyone was in the position to warm up, right, OK. Uh, Arsenal have got it at right back, this is where we need to be. Arsenal have got it central midfield. And you learn so much tactically through Rafa Benitez. Every day he was out there on the training pitch. That was the big difference for me. And eventually it came that you, you left Liverpool. Was it, was it a wrench to leave? Rafa was quite cold in the way that he managed, in that man management skills. Didn't speak to Rafa. The message came via a chief scout. Did that disappoint you? I think that was the ruthlessness of football. You know, I, I'm not saying Rafa was, was wrong to do that. That was his style. I was no longer needed, no longer wanted. Shouldn't there be that human element, though, do you think? I think? I think if you go to football clubs up and down the country, you'll find similar stories. Players leaving the football club, and it's a case of somebody else within the football club telling you. And it was a chief scout telling me. I had a lot of injuries at the time. I'd had four operations that hadn't worked out for me. And I was aware that because of the injuries, I was unable to compete at that level again, which is what I'd been told. Was it a disappointment to... to to drop down or because of your injuries? It wasn't, it wasn't through a lack of ability. Mentally, I was like, there's not a lot else I can do. If I want to have any kind of career to stay in the game, this is where I need to go to. Grateful that I had a few moments. I'd love to sit here now and say, you know, I've played four, 500 games for Liverpool. I've won this, I've done that. I've got a couple of moments which the fans can look back on 10, 15 years later and say, I still remember that moment. For me, when I left Liverpool, I had a great relationship with my teammates, a great relationship with the supporters. So I can come back and cheer the modern day team on, knowing that 
I had a small little uh, spell here myself, which is what it's all about. Neil, thank you. No, thank you.